With the UK's lockdown well in force and my usual place of washing my car at my parents' house not available, it was time to give my wife's Tiguan a good clean, which was well deserved. However, at our house we don't actually have a running water, so I needed to look for a solution. Q Optimum No Rinse. Not used this product before and this was the first time of using it, so I thought why not take this opportunity to make a real world test video on what I perceive to be actually a dirty vehicle and not one that sat out for a couple of days and been heavily detailed prior to it. I decided to buy the Optimum No Rinse in what the Americans call the 32 ounce bottle or in the UK it looks like a litre. Um, first thoughts, no frills and spills here but one touch I did like is there is a foil seal under the lid to stop any leakages in transportation. There's not a lot of detailing companies doing that. Now I've taken two buckets as I would with any normal car and followed Optimum's guidelines on using the products. They say one capful for every gallon in your bucket. Well, these buckets hold five gallons of water, so five capfuls was used. And then I used the Auto Finesse uh, noodle wash mitt as opposed to the microfibers. For me, I like the wash mitt method purely because it gives me a little bit more density on the medium I'm using to pick up the dirt. Also, I've taken an Auto Finesse Pro Bottle and new Pro Trigger and made myself a pre-soak solution. Again, another thing that Optimum do recommend you do. First time using this product, I'm going to follow all the guidelines. So, I used four capfuls of the Optimum No Rinse and then dunked my bottle into my clean water bucket to top it up to give me a full litre of pre-soak solution. You'll notice I've got a couple of new buckets here. Um, they're particularly fancy. They are from a website in the UK called Clean Your Car. Um, love them purely on the basis of their clear. No other reason. And what I'll do is I'll drop a link below. And for anyone wondering in the UK um, or anyone with a pro bottle like this is wondering the four capfuls equates to about 50 millilitres um, of product and then top the rest up with clean water straight out of your bucket. Now, as I'm washing a car, I'm going to take any necessary steps as always. You're going to work top to bottom, cleaning the cleanest area first and then working your way down to your dirty areas. However, for your entertainment and the sanity of yourself on this video, I'm working on a TIG one. The roof is not exactly exciting and it's not particularly easy to film. So that was done off camera as a couple of other panels were. With the roof and the top wind low line done, I moved down onto the next flat area. Uh, that would be the bonnet on this car. It doesn't actually have a, a tailgate with um, a deck lid on it. So just a bonnet to do. Now, again, following manufacturer's guidelines and instructions, the pre-soak solution uh, was sprayed onto the panel quite liberally to the point of whereby you'll now see it start to drip off of the panel uh, where it's puddling up so much. This means that the polymers in the Optimum No Rinse are actually starting to lift the dirt before I even touch anything, rolling away any light grime that's possible. I'm not convinced personally that this method is a scratch-free way to wash a car. Question is, is there ever a scratch-free way to wash a car? That's a debate for another day. With the Optimum No Rinse pre-soak now done, I've taken the noodle mitt and using one side, giving it an initial swipe in straight lines only, then flipping the wash mitt, I come back and give it another go over. As with washing any normal car, I come back, dunk the dirty mitt into my non-optimum no rinse solution side, then come back with the clean mitt and then load up with some more solution. Again, taking the first side of the microfiber wash mitt to scoop up the heaviest dirt then flipping over where you're seeing the product start to puddle off i'm coming back with the second side of the wash mitt 
and just giving it one last go over. I then continued round the car as I did in the bonnet. Um, the the pre-soak solution was quite a nice touch with the adjustable trigger on the new Finesse Pro bottle on the basis that it allowed a little bit of pressure of cleaning in some areas. Here you've got the honeycomb grills around the fog lamps. Dirt was trapped in there. I'm not saying this got all of it out, but it definitely helped get some of it out. And for me, this is where having water pressure really does come into its own. Although the overall product as a whole done a lovely job on the car and I have to say it come up better than I thought it would have, easier than I thought. Some things just don't beat a bit of pressurised water. This was the case also later on with the carpeted wheel arches in the rear. I have real no way of cleaning them so they had to stay slightly grimy and suffice with a bit of a brush scrub. Now onto the sides and some of the grimy areas on the car. Um, I did a couple of panels with the pre soak solution at any given time. This was just to allow it to dwell for slightly longer. Then, as per normal, come back with my wash mitt and use one side before clip flipping to a clean side. The time that I was working on the car was about six or seven o'clock in the evening. It wasn't particularly hot outside. Maybe had been 17 degrees during the day. So basically summer for us. So it was quite cool conditions and I was finding the product wasn't trying out and on the surface at any means. However, if you're working in warmer climates like some of the guys out in the US to watch these videos or Australia, for example, I may recommend drying after you finish the panel just to stop any product drying out. However, if needs be, I just let it sit and come back with a drying towel and dry it up later. Now with the car fully washed with the no rinse solution and the two bucket wash method, um, I took a small amount and dusted down the panel with a bit of the pre soak solution. This was really to reactivate any product that was left on the surface, but also add some lubricity to the drying process. Not many people know it, but a lot of people are scratching their cars when they're drying it. So, dusted the product onto the surface and then taken an Aquadrilux drying towel and dried the car as normal. Again, not exciting for you to see me dry a roof here, so took some of my more key areas and sped up the process. Not very exciting, but nice to see some real world testing being done, I suppose. Aqua Deluxe, great drying towel, nice density and really did soak up any of the optimum no rinse that was left on the surface and I found dusting the product onto the surface definitely helped dry the car like I would say with a detail spray on a normal contact wash. As you can see the bucket on the right hand side was the rinse bucket and was particularly grimy afterwards and we used up most of our solution. but. What I thought I would do is take out that grit guard and use that last bit of solution to have a crack with the wheels. Again, being semi-realistic here, I wasn't chasing perfection, so I thought I'd just give the faces of the wheel a clean with that last bit of solution I had and just give that lip of the plastic arch liner a quick whiz over as well. Again, just a bit more of a test of the product here I suppose, um, seeing how it deals with a different kind of grime. On the paintwork we was dealing with some bugs and some baked on road grime and dirty dust had settled on the car overnight, whereas here we was dealing with brake dust and all the other gubbins that jam into your alloy wheels whilst you're driving along. The noodle mitt was used here. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get absolutely slated in the comments. However, something like this, I always throw the wash mitt into the washing machine after it's been washed anyway. Um, it didn't go straight back onto the paintwork and actually it only gets used for the optimum no rinse anyway. So there's no stress there. But as you can see, that 50-50 optimum no rinse really had no problem with removing any baked on brake dust that was on the wheel, there was no need for anything stronger on these wheels. 
I would say there was a couple hundred miles worth of grime on a fairly well protected wheel. They're not coated, they've not recently been waxed, but they always clean up quite nice. So it's a thumbs up there as well from me. With the wheel cleaned, I took an older microfiber instead of a nice uh, Aquadelux and just gave it a final wipe down and giving the tire a wipe down as well. For this video and for the purpose of the product review, I didn't dress the tires. Um, it's not to say I didn't later on in the process, however, I just thought it was a nice way for concentrating on the bodywork and the wheels as opposed to the blingy bits that can often be perceived to be the shining glory in the detail. Tires were just wiped down with the optimum, no rinse and an old microfiber cloth. Overall, I have to say I was thoroughly impressed with the results that I achieved. Not as slick as I thought it was going to be, however, we was working on a very dirty vehicle here, and I would say it would be used again in lockdown. Anyway, stay safe, like, share, comment, subscribe, and all of that for some more detailing videos in the near future. Cheers!